uh, and so many things to discuss. Let's start off with C-band, because that's a big number, $27 billion. And along with it comes additional CapEx above where you were to, to build it out. What is it going to mean for the company in terms of your ability to offer 5G? Well, look, it's an important step to 5G. We, we start on a great foundation of our low-band spectrum. Our sub-6 spectrum is you know, the largest portfolio in the industry, so it's a good foundation to build from. This particular spectrum hits a important enabler capability to kind of broadly put out more bandwidth. And uh, this, this investment is a long-lived investment. And I, I can tell you, David, Having been through a number of these auctions, they're, they're always repeating themselves. You, you kind of go through them and you end up investing a little bit more than you thought you might have to or you really wanted to. And then you get five years down the road and you look back and you say, thank God we did that because uh, the appetite for customers to use the service more as it becomes more capable always seems to open up opportunity, and I think it's going to be the same in this case. Yeah, where do you think we are in that cycle? And I mentioned it obviously also in light of Apple, which is out there with the phone, 5G enabled, but you know, the upgrade cycle. I mean, how long until we get to that sort of that point that you're describing, John, in your opinion? Well, I, I think, you know, if I go back and think about what happened at the early days of LTE, many of the same questions that were out there, uh, that are out there today were out there in 2010. You know, it's going to take billions of dollars to turn up LTE. Where is the money going to come from? How is it going to be used? And I don't think anybody looks back now and says, you know, what did the last 10 years bring us when LTE brought in that next step function of bandwidth and that next step function of performance on the network? It opened up all kinds of wonderful things that people do that they never thought about. We didn't know ride hailing was going to be there and you were going to need that kind of capability and, and responsiveness. We didn't know there'd be this much entertainment video available to us that people wanted to take with them on the go. <clears throat> I think we're very much in that early stage right now with 5G. And as we start seeing things like more autonomous vehicles come out, we start seeing private networks show up in businesses, we look at new opportunities that show up in medical device monitoring, we're all going to be looking around five years from now and say, wow, I, I didn't think about that. And we're going to find plenty of use for this capability and this bandwidth. Yeah. Um John, you know, conversations of numbers like this obviously get us to the balance sheet where AT&T always faces some questions. You guys point out in your press release having a strong cash position. I'm sure it will be something you focus on in part of your investor day. $23 billion in the expected payments this year for the C-band spectrum. Dividends to shareholders that uh, come close to $15 billion. Gross capital investment in the $21 billion range. Obviously, got to keep investing in HBO Max. How are you able to do it all and, and give investors the confidence that that dividend will be there well look we you missed one number there that's 26 billion dollars of free cash flow this year and we generate a lot of cash and yes it is a large balance sheet and we have more debt on it right now than we'll have in a couple of years but we also generate a tremendous amount of cash flow in this business numbers that others are aspiring to get to. And as a result of that, we feel really comfortable. We did a lot of work over the last couple of years restructuring that balance sheet. It's, it was admirable work by the team. Yeah. You look at our, our interest rate costs of what we're paying on that portfolio and how maturities have been extended. We are in a great position right now. And even with the slightly higher level of investment in C-band than what we expected, you know, the reality is, is that's about a year's worth, a little bit longer, but about a year's worth of, of deferral on getting us down to our, our ultimate uh, ratios that we want to get to on the balance sheet. So, um, you know, we're not in a position where we got to go out to the long-term markets and restructure our portfolio. Right. Um, in fact, you've seen what we've done is largely on shorter-term maturities because over the course of this year with cash flow and in the next year, we'll largely take care of that. And and be back on our march to delevering. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.